Dachshund, Dachs, Dachshund, Dachshund. Because Christmas is just around the corner this week, I thought I'd paint a little Dachshund in a Santa's hat. Dachshund. I've been busy this week practicing my figure and portrait painting, but I thought I'd take a break from that and paint something with a Christmas theme for you. I came across this cute photo of the duck's hund on Unsplash website. It was taken by Erda Estramira. I added the Santa's hat because I thought it would make a really cute Christmas painting. This is a piece of Arsh cold pressed watercolour paper. I've got it in portrait orientation. I stretched it and stapled it to my gator board. The first thing I want to do is paint in the fabric that the dog is sitting in. This is my Casaneo oval pointed wash brush. I'll use this brush to put the water onto the paper. I'm going to keep the paint fairly light in colour when I paint this on so I've made sure that my pencil lines are really light. I can just see where they are. When I wet the fabric that the dog is sitting in I'm going to take the water out onto the background as well. I make sure too that the water that I'm using is clean. I don't want to put any dirty paint marks onto the background where I don't want them. I take that water all the way to the edge of the paper. Same on this side. Because the water is on the background as well as the fabric, when I put the paint on, the paint will bleed off into the background and create those soft edges that I'm looking for. I'm going to mix a grey. This is French ultramarine and burnt sienna. And this will be the main colour on the fabric. This is a Da Vinci Maestro number no. 8 round brush. When I paint this, I want to establish the shape of the fabric around the dog. And I also need to think about the way the fabric is draping. Where is it taut? Where is it loose? And where are all the shadows? And while I do this, I'm mindful that I want to also leave some white paper showing. I'll try to use big bold strokes with my brush and I'm not concerned with detail at this point. So that's the outer edge. That's going to bleed off into the background because of the water that's on the paper. And that's what I'm looking for. I want soft edges around the perimeter of it. I want the focus to be on the dog. So this fabric needs to be fairly simple. I've gone up the other side and you can see I'm trying to leave some white paper showing. This colour here is Windsor Violet. I'm going to use that on here as well. So when I put this on I put it over the top of the blue grey colour that I've made rather than on the white areas that I've left. happy with that I'm going to leave that to dry now. I'll do the same thing up the top here. Water onto the fabric itself and then I take the water off the fabric onto the background. Okay so that's nice and wet now. This is the grey that I mixed. French ultramarine and burnt sienna mixed together. Again, I'm establishing the shape, the folds, and I'm leaving some white paper showing. The white paper will be the lightest areas of the fabric.
because I've used Windsor Violet down the bottom. I'm putting some up the top here as well. Down the bottom here, it's still slightly wet, so I can put a bit more grey on here. So where I'm working, the paper is wet. And it's wet over here as well. And this is what it looked like after it had dried. I'm painting some masking fluid onto the highlights that are in the eyes. This is schminky masking fluid that I've got on my brush. So I've only got one little highlight on it. For the face, I want to work on wet paper as well. I'll avoid putting water into the eyes and on the nose. But I'll put it pretty much everywhere else, all over the face. This colour here is burnt sienna. It's going to paint all the little brown parts that I see on the face. Now I've got sepia. That's going onto the wet paper as well. That's dry now. Around the outside edge of the eye, I want to paint some sepia. So I'm wetting that area with water. I've taken that water pretty much all over the face, except I haven't put it on the nose. This is sepia again, and I'll paint this around the outside edge of both eyes. And now I'm starting to paint it onto the snout. Then I looked at the nose and decided to put some sepia over the top of it as well. In my palette here, I've squirted out some French Ultramarine and some Burnt Sienna. I've put it into the same well. What I want to do is mix a black with the two colours. And I want this colour to be really dark. So I haven't mixed any water into it. The only water that's in there was the water that was on my brush. So now what I can do is take some of that, put it into this other well and mix some water with it. And then I will have a lighter mix of black. So if I put a little bit of water in there, and then when I put that on my paper, it'll be much lighter. I'll work on wet paper again. So I'm putting water on here, but this time I'm not putting the water where I see the burnt sienna and the sepia. I'm painting around those areas. Once I've got the water where I want it, I use the watery black. So the black that I mixed, that's got a bit of water in it. And I paint that on. So I don't want to go too dark too quickly. This will be the lightest black that I see on the dog. So this will be the highlighted areas of black. And what I'll do later on is come back over the top with the darker pigment and I'll leave the lighter areas showing. Paint around the brown areas. So that's all covered with the lighter black or the watery black. That dried completely. I used a hairdryer to dry it to make sure it's set. Now I'm re-wetting it with water, but I'm wetting the brown parts of the face. Now I've got some more burnt sienna. 
This time it's got more pigment in it, less water, and I want to darken up the brown areas. So this other side is wet as well with water. Then I use burnt sienna again. But it's darker than the first layer of burnt sienna that I put on there. Now I want to start to paint on the darker areas of black. So again, I'll work on wet paper. So I wet the area where I'll be working. This time I'm going to use my really thick black. I load that up on the brush and it's quite gooey and sticky. So I push it into the bristles and then I'll wipe off the excess on my cloth. And then I'll use my brush then on the wet paper. That gives me that really dark colour. I'll speed this area up now. Still working on the wet paper. I'm going to extend the water out a bit further. And I can keep working. So that was water. And now I've got that thick gooey paint again. Because it's fairly thick, it tends to stay where I put it. It'll spread softly and give me those lovely soft edges, but it doesn't spread all over the place like the watery paint does. So I've got the paint where I want it now, and now I can soften away these edges. I do the other side of the head the same way on the wet paper with the thick dark paint. So that's burnt sienna mixed with French ultramarine. Okay, so now I need to let that dry. Then I re-wet the bottom section of the face and I keep going with the black. Just working on the wet paper with the thick paint. Keep an eye on the reference photo that I'm using so that I make sure I get the markings in the right place. Wet over here with water and I can keep going over here. The black sometimes varies in colour because sometimes when I pick it up it will have more burnt sienna mixed into it and other times it will have more French ultramarine. It's not something I'm doing on purpose. It's just the way I picked the paint up at the time. All of that dried. Now I've re-wet it with water. And now I've got some of the watery black I'm painting over the top. This is the stage of the painting where you start to doubt yourself and you wonder whether it's actually working. So this is the time when I have to push through and trust myself. Trust the paints. I know it goes through an ugly stage. Now I've put some of the watery black over the top. I've left the brown marking showing though. I've just painted watery black all over this ear and now I'm painting some of the darker, thicker black over the top of it while it's still wet. I've just filled in this area below the chin with some of the black. I painted that on dry paper though here. I've painted some burnt sienna in both eyes and while 
that's wet, I paint some sepia onto the iris. So the burnt sienna is still wet. And that's making the sepia bleed slightly into it and giving me those soft edges around the outside edge. Here I've done the same thing, but I'm also starting to put it around the outside edge of the eye. It's still wet. You can see how that paint's bleeding. I'll fill in the white paper here. This is sepia. I'll do the same thing over here. Now I'm using some black. I painted in the pupil and the area around the eye. I've darkened it. I've taken the masking fluid off both eyes. Now I'm using the black paint just to make the masking fluid area a bit smaller. This ear on the left hand side has got a bit of brown showing through the black fur. So I've wet the ear and I've just put some burnt sienna there. Now I've got my black again. Here I'm putting on some of the darker black over the top before it dries. I find black to be a colour that I've got to keep layering until I get it as dark as I want it. So I've re-wet this area here and I'm starting to put another layer of the black paint over the top. What I have to be mindful of is that I leave the lighter areas showing now. I don't want to cover those up with paint. So I wet a section at a time and then I put the paint on while it's wet. Trying to leave those lighter sections. Over here I'm darkening this ear as well. You can see I've done the right side of the face but I haven't done the left side yet. So I'll speed this section up so you can see me work on it. I've wet it with water and now I've got the dark black paint again. I put it on and then I spread it out. The paper's wet up here as well. I've got to keep layering the paint until I get that depth of colour that I need. Here I'm starting to paint in the nose. I've got sepia but it's fairly dark and I'm working on wet paper here as well. And then before it dries, I come back over with some black. Here I'm starting to add some darker burnt sienna areas. I felt that the first layer of paint's not dark enough, so I'm just putting a bit more colour there. So that's burnt sienna on wet paper. And here I've got a bit more sepia. For the white part of the hat, I used the grey that I mixed for the fabric around the dog. This is burnt sienna mixed with some French ultramarine. I put some Windsor Violet on there too while it was still wet. Here I'll wet the little white pom-pom. So I've got water on my brush now. I don't mind if the paint bleeds a little bit into it. I've wet past the outside edge of the little pom-pom. 
so that I'll get those soft fuzzy edges around the outside perimeter of it. This is violet, Windsor violet. I painted the Santa hat in with some Scarlet Lake. I'm doing this on wet paper as well. Then I let it dry and I wet this outer section. I put some more Scarlet Lake in there and now I've got Windsor Violet there as well. It looks really dark there because it's wet but it will dry a lot lighter than that. Just softening my paint edge now. Here on the white part of the hat I didn't like the way the edge was almost straight along the edge of the dog. So I've used my eradicator brush to scrub off a bit of the dog's ear and that's given me more of a wavy edge there which I'm more happy with. So just here for instance I can use the brush wet but the paper's dry that takes a bit of the black paint off then I can tidy it up. I'll use some clean water and a clean brush and that'll take that paint off there I had to give the red part of the hat quite a few layers of paint as it dried it was quite a lot lighter so I've used Scarlet Lake and Windsor Violet in the shadows and I've put a bit more Windsor Violet on the white part of the hat as well after that it was time to bring my attention to all the folds of the cloth that the dog is sitting in so here I'm working on dry paper with some of the grey that I mixed up at the start French ultramarine and burnt sienna trying to get a few hard edges in here now everything else is soft so I need a few hard edges to define some of the areas here though I've got a soft edge where it opens up I've got that hard edge on either side I wet the paper and then I take the paint right to the edge of the water so I'll take the paint right to the edge of the water on the right hand side so over here that gives me a hard edge down there and then it bleeds back over the water to give me the soft edge on the left hand side and I start to do the same thing here I wet the area I want to work on with water and I take the paint right to the edge of the water which gives me the hard edge so I want a hard edge right along the right hand side of this area so down there I want that hard edge and then I soften the paint edge here with a damp brush the paper's wet here as well and I've got some more of that grey paint this is creating another crease or fold in the fabric here I'm softening the edges of the paint while that's wet I'll drop a bit of violet on there to add some interest and I'll create another little crease here I'm wetting the paper again I want to create a shadow under that main fold where the dog's paws are so I've wet that with water now I'll get the grey paint and I'll run it along that pencil line and that creates a shadow there when I worked on the fabric I didn't follow the reference photo very much instead I worked with the folds and the drape marks that I made when I first painted it in at the start of the painting here I've got some violet and that's given me a shadow underneath there where the pores are resting makes it look like the fabrics bulging out there I've wet the paper here as well and I'm deep 
deepening the shadow that's there. That helps to make those bulges in the fabric pop out a bit further. I decided I didn't like the edge along the edge of my hat. It looked a bit overworked and awkward looking. So I'm wetting the paper on the right hand side over the top of the hat as well. Putting some red paint there, Scarlet Lake. Lifting my board and making the paint drift off into the water. So instead of it looking like it was a mistake, I've made it look like I meant to do it. So that's hidden that area where I felt that I had overworked it. For the little feet, I wet them with water. I did them one at a time. I've wet the left one with water. I've got my black paint now. So I put the black paint where I see the darker colour. And then I put some burnt sienna where I see some burnt sienna. And then I come back with the darker black. Still working on the wet paper. Then when that was dry, I got some more black paint. And I started working on the dry paper to add a bit of detail. This brings in the little pads and the claws and I did the other foot the same way I worked on the wet paper first then I dried it off and worked on the dry paper just darkening that area behind the paws Okay, so that's the other paw done, same way. And here I'm wetting the little section between the folds and I've got a bit of Windsor Violet here. And that helps to define some of those creases and folds. I used my number two brush to paint some whiskers using the black. That's on dry paper there. I hold the brush right up on its tip so that I get a fine line. I try to do them quickly and not fuss over them. Because I put that red splashy background up the top, I thought I'd try and balance it out a bit by doing a similar sort of thing down the bottom here. So I'm going to wet it with water. I'll take the water onto the fabric as well so that I don't get a hard paint edge around the outside edge of the fabric. So I make sure that's nice and wet. And then I get my Windsor Violet. Because the fabric is wet as well, the paint bleeds onto it gently and it also goes onto the background then I lift it and I try to make it flow where I want it to go I decided to put a bit of the grey paint there as well but this has got a lot of French ultramarine in it only a tiny bit of burnt sienna I did the same thing with that. Until I was happy with it. I used my tissue to take off a bit of colour along the edge of the fabric. And then I was done. And that wraps up a year of watercolour videos from me. I'd like to wish all of my patrons and all of my subscribers here on YouTube a very happy Christmas and New Year. Thank you so much for your support. You keep me inspired and motivated. I want to keep learning and growing with this beautiful medium 
and that's because of all of you please stay safe and well stay happy and I will see you in the new year with lots of new and exciting paintings to explore. Take care. I added a Santa's hat because I thought it'd make a really cr crude Christmas painting. Yep, it's crude. I came across a beautiful photo on Unsplash website taken by I can't remember but I thought I'd take a break from that and paint something with a Christmas theme for you yeah see it's Christmas <sighs> I came across a beautiful photo on Unsplash website taken by Erda Estramira. This little dash, dash, dash sound, dash, duck sound, duck sound, duck sound. I came across this photo on Unsplash website of the Dachshund taken by Erda Estramira. I thought it would make a really cute Christmas painting, so I added the Santa's hat for cuteness. I've been busy this week pack, pack, practicing, 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 practicing. Yeah. Practicing. On Unsplash website, it was taken by Erda Estramira and I thought it would make a really cute painting. So to add it, to add it, to add it with a Christmas theme. <laughs>